All right, Shalom. Well, first and foremost, give me all praise, glory and honor that's due to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rachab, Adashim, double honors to the elders and apostles of the great millstone who rule well and peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Shalom to Yuakim. And a uh, real quick lesson, man, on the Maccabean revolt. Uh, the, 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 I'm, re I'm reading this on Wikipedia. <laughs> and, uh, you know, because it, it's got a lot of the maps and stuff in there, but you can read the account of the. Uh, of the Maccabean revolt um, in the book of first Maccabees. Well, this, this, what we're going to read about the revolt, you can read it in the first book of Maccabees chapters, basically chapters two through four. And uh, I'm going to skim and skip through a few, a little bit of that, but I wanted to show you this nonsense, man. Uh, what a piece of shit because Esau has to acknowledge that the Maccabean revolt went down because you know in the, uh, a long time ago there well there's still people to this day that will try to argue that the actual people the israelites never even existed which is ridiculous every every secular empire that's ever existed has a recording of us and their engagements with us but that's neither here nor there um watch how he watch how he tries to portray this it says the maccabean revolt a uh, jewish rebellion led by the maccabees against the seleucid empire against the Hellenistic influence on Jewish life, all right? So far, so good. The main phase of the revolt lasted from 167 to 160 BCE um, and ended with the Seleucids in control of Judea, all right? And, well, that's, that's really, uh, well, yeah, that's, that's, basically, uh, that's basically true. Um, and it says... But the conflict between Maccabees and Hellenized Jews and the Seleucids continued until 134 BCE, all right, with the Maccabees eventually attaining uh, independence, all right? And that's where you had basically the Hasmonean dynasty, who we had uh, basically was our leadership un until the time of the Romans, all right, um, which the Romans were taking down the Greeks at this very same time where all this Seleucid stuff was going on. All right, but let's read. It says Seleucid King Antiochus Epiphanes, all right, launched a massive campaign of repression against the Jewish religion in 168 BC. But this is the bullshit. It says the reason he did so is not entirely clear. You see how they're trying to characterize? They don't know why he sent a massive army down there. <laughs> all right, because he, he rounded, the scriptures say he rounded up his whole, he gathered the whole realm. I'll try to find it real quick. Hey, go, go. I'll try to find it real quick. Um, it says, let me just keep reading a little bit. All right. It says the reason he did so is not entirely clear, but it seems to have been related to the king mistaking an internal conflict among Jewish priesthood as a full scale rebellion. So see, they're trying to make it seem like it was some kind of internal battle against Jake against Jake, and 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 uh, although we were occupied by the Greeks, we were we were like basically like a nuisance. We weren't really a formidable. Re it wasn't a full on rebellion. You see, this devil is trying to minimize the great works that Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai did on behalf of his people. All right, because it's so far fetched to believe that the Lord could deliver a small group of men. All right. And, and deliver a large group of men into the hands of a small group of men. All right. They refuse to believe that, man. All right. And we'll get some of those accounts. All right. To show you that this is utter and complete uh, dog shit, man. All right. It says Jewish practices were banned. Jerusalem was placed under direct Seleucid control in the second temple. And Judaism was made the site of a syncretic pagan uh, Jewish cult. And that's all accounted for when he defiled our... Uh, our temples, man. All right. Our temple. It says the repression triggered exactly the revolt that Antiochus had feared with a group of Jewish fighters led by Judas Maccabee uh, and his family rebelling in 167 BCE seeking independence. The rebels that, as a whole would come to be known as the Maccabees. All right. Now it says the rebellion started as a guerrilla movement in Judean countryside, raiding towns and terrorizing Greek officials. See, that's more bullshit. It wasn't just Greek officials, man. We took out entire armies, man. Why do you think Antiochus gathered, gathered his whole fucking army, man? All right? These were not just some uh, random officials and embassies scattered throughout the, throughout the land, man. All right? 
this, this that that's the devil trying to trying to weasel his way in there because ultimately he knows all right that this is the truth all right and it says the subsequent cleansing of the temple and rededication of the altar all right is the source of the festival of hanukkah which we're in right now all right and uh, uh by the way uh ashra hanukkah all right but it's but but how how did we get that to the point to where we we made a high holy day out of this man we thrashed the Greeks so thoroughly all right <laughs> that 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 they had to they had to let us do our thing man all right now let's go to the account to show that this is this is all this is all made up uh this is this deception man that shit irked me man all right it says uh I mean this is First Maccabees chapter two all right and I'm going down to I'll start at verse 64. Wherefore, ye my sons, be valiant and show yourselves men and be happy to the law, for by it shall ye obtain glory. And behold, I know that your brother Simon is a man of counsel. Give ear unto him all way. He shall be a father unto you. As for Judas Maccabees, he hath been mighty and strong even from his youth up. All right. Let him be your captain and fight the battle of the people, man. All right. So you always had a, a warrior class and you always had a, a, a judge, a judge and ruling class of, uh, of judges, man. All right. Kind of like the king and, and, the, and the prophet. All right. In this case, this would be like a general. All right. And, and, a, uh, and, a, and an advisor. OK. And it says, uh, take also unto, unto you all that observe the law that and avenge ye the wrong of your people. So. This was not just no no uh, antagonizing officials, okay? We were taking back the cities and the temple, all right? And it says, fully recompense fully the heathen, commandments of the law. And let me see. Is this the, is this the point that I wanted? Oh, yeah, yeah, there it is, verse 68. It says, recompense fully the heathen, all right? And take heed to the commandments of the law. So that was the commandment to recompense the, the heathen fully, man. All right. So when this guy says they were rebellion started as a guerrilla movement in the Judean countryside, raiding towns and terrorizing Greek officials. No, the, the scriptures say we were, we went to war with every motherfucker, man. All right. And it says Greek officials far from direct Seleucid control. So basically Esau is trying to downplay it like, oh, those guys weren't even under Seleucid control, man. They, they snuck us. That's what he's trying to say. You know, we, the guerrilla tactics are basically ambush tactics, man, where you're not fully fighting head on. All right. You kind of lying in wait. That kind of that kind of uh, that kind of warfare. All right. That's what he's trying to accuse us of, which we were good at all of it. OK, but. But we, we, the scriptures clearly tell you, man, how this whole thing went down. And nobody has more detail on this matter than the scriptures. Everybody else's account, whether it be the Greeks, the Romans, all right, the other uh, nations around us, they have accounts of it, but they don't have anywhere near this detail. So who are you going to believe? All right. Let me see if I can find the other points real quick. All right. So we went, that, that, was, the, that was the order, recompense fully the heathen, okay, not officials. All right. We, we were cleansing our land, man. You think we're just going to let a bunch of fucking Edomites sit in our land, man? All right. After, after all that shit they brought in. All right. Let me see. Eh. Bear with me for a second here. Let's see. Yep, it says, uh, I'll just start at verse 3. So he got the people, his people great honor and put on a breastplate as a giant and girt his warlike harness about him and made battles pro, uh, protecting the host with his sword. In his axe, he was like a lion and like a lion's whelp roaring for his prey, for he pursued the wicked and sought them out. All right, and burnt up those that vexed his people. Who is his people, man? All right, it's not the Greeks. All right. So he, he was there to get to separate the, the Greeks and the Hellenistic influence, as they said in the article, uh, from 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 the Israelites, man. All right. Moreover, he went through the cities of Judah, destroying the ungodly out of them 
and turning away wrath from Israel. All right. So that he was renowned unto the utmost part of the earth and he had received unto him as much as were ready to perish. All right. So that's why Esau is hurt, because when this was going down, everybody in the world was talking about it, man. OK, everybody knew about this. The Romans knew about it. The, the, the all of Greece knew about it. How do you think Antiochus was not even down there when this started, man? All right. He, he gathered his army and came down with this great army to, to fight us because of what was going down. And, it, and when you look at the Seleucid Empire, it was it was huge. All right. And so he gathered men from his entire empire, man, to come down and deal with it. All right. But it says. Um, OK, this is the point of the point I wanted. Verse 10, it says, then Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together and a great host out of Samaria to fight against Israel. So that's telling you right there in the very first battle or one of the first battles. All right that they gathered a great host, all right? These are not some skirmishes and guerrilla tactics antagonizing uh, uh, embassies and officials, all right? They were getting their shit pushed in through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, man, all right? And it says, then Apollonius gathered the Gentiles together and a great host out of Samaria to fight against Israel, which thing when Judas perceived, he went forth to meet them. Okay, does that sound like guerrilla tactics to you? Let me look that up real quick as a matter of fact, man. Let me see if I can um, find guerrilla guerrilla warfare. Okay, guerrilla warfare is a type of asymmetric warfare, meaning you're not fighting line against line like you see in the movie. They're all lined up, getting ready to run into each other. It's not like that, all right? It says, competition between opponents of unequal strength, all right? It is also a type of irregular warfare, that is, it aims not simply to defeat an invading enemy, but to win popular support and political influence to the enemy's cost. See how it works? Guerrilla warfare, type of warfare fought by irregulars and fast-moving, small-scale actions against orthodox military and police forces on occasion against rival insurgent forces either independently or in conjunction. That's basically it on that. All right, but you get the point. It's when you're not fighting head up. All right, that's what guerrilla warfare is. That's what those guys over there uh, in Gaza are doing. They're doing guerrilla warfare because they, they're not going to fight the Israeli army uh, uh, straight up. All right? So that's what Esau is trying to say what was going down here, man. But what does it say right here? Verse 11, when, Judah, when the thing Judas perceived, he went forth to meet them. So they gathered a great host, came down to meet us, and we met them, man. We met up. We met them like men, okay? Don't listen to, to, the, to the fucking devil, man. And that's why you got to be careful when you're, when you're reading certain things, all right? You have to really be in the spirit and, 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 have, a, uh, and have a mind of, uh, of diligently searching and seeking things out, man. Does that make sense? All right. So that 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 completely dispels that, man. And it says, let me see. OK, in the first 13, now when Saron, a prince in the army of Syria, heard that Judas had gathered him untogether, him a multitude of company of the faithful to go out with him to war. He said, I will get me a name and honor in the kingdom. For I will go fight with Judas and them that are with him who despises the king commandment. Now, why does this guy think he's going to get some kind of glory if he's just fighting a bunch of uh, a small number of Israelites that are hiding in bushes and caves and things like that, popping out on them? All right. No, man. This, you're not going to get glory all off of that. You're going to get glory because the entire kingdom, all of the kingdom, the whole world knew what was going on, man. <laughs> Once the word got out, they were like, oh, shit. All right. And, then, and it said. Uh, to be avenged of Israel. And it says, and when he came near of the going up of uh, Beth Horon, Judas went forth to meet him with a small company. All right. Who, when they saw the host coming to meet them, said unto Judas, 
How shall we be able, being so few, to fight against so great a multitude and so strong? So they, they were bringing it, man. These were not Greek fucking officials, man, that they were just uh, antagonizing, all right? And it says, seeing we are ready to faint with fasting all this day. So <laughs> Judas put them on a fast, all right, and said, we're going to do this, man, with a small company, all right? So the, the spirit was on Judas at that time, man. He said, we don't need, he, he was in the spirit of Gideon. We don't need 10,000. We need, we only need 300 and we can, the Lord going to deliver them to us, man. All right. It says verse 18, um, unto whom Judas answered, it is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few. And the Lord going to do that with spiritual powers too, man, in this time. Okay. It said, it is no hard matter for many to be shut up in the hands of a few and with the, and with the most high of heaven, it is all one. So he's saying it's the same thing to, to, to deliver 10 men or, or, or 10 million men to you, man. It's the same thing to the Most High, all right? To deliver with a great multitude or a small company, all right? For the victory of the, of the battle standeth not in the multitude of a host, but the strength coming from heaven, all right? And that's what Esau is, is heard about, all right? Ridiculous, man. And it's beautiful that I'm, I'm kind of going into this during the time of Hanukkah because... You know, brothers usually uh, kind of just go over the story of the, of the Maccabees, but this was interesting because Esau is trying to downplay, you know, the, the glory of the, of the Israelites, man. What is that? It's a lock here. Lock here. All right. Um, all right, Salakia. Now, let me go back. Let me see. All right, and then it says verse 25. All right, just to give you the context of what's happening here, so you don't know this, so you know this is not, uh, this was not a small matter, man. This was breaking news, world news. <laughs> all right. It says verse 25, okay? Then began the fear of Judas and his brethren and an exceeding great dread to fall upon the nations round about them, man. All right? So the word got out major, man. All right? It says, insomuch as his fame came unto the king and all nations talked of the battles of Judas. All right? You see? This is why Esau had to record it. All right. Now, when Antiochus the king, now when King Antiochus heard these things, he was full of indignation. Wherefore, he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm. <laughs> so does this sound like a, a, a small, uh, light uh, uh, series of skirmishes that happened over the course of eight years? No, man, it was not. The the Greeks were shook. All right, until the Lord uh, saw fit to let. Uh, to let the uh, the Greeks regain their control, man, which did happen later on, all right? But but ultimately, we got our temple back. We got to keep our customs again, all right? And we had the Hasmonean dynasty, even though they weren't all the way right. We, we, we had peace, uh, uh, at least a version of peace, okay? For a small period of time, all right? And it says... Uh, and matter of fact, let me see if I can get the map of the Seleucid and how how big the Seleucid Empire was, man. Okay. Let me go straight to this, this map here. If I can get to it. I'm about to, did I pass it up? Maybe not. There we go. Okay, look at this empire, man. <laughs> you see? So so it's no wonder when you read the when you read the scriptures, okay, 
it tells you that, that Antiochus made war with Ptolemy, all right? Because when we came out of the Persian captivity, all right, it was Ptolemy when the Greeks took over, all right? It was Ptolemy that ruled over us, man. He had the, he had the region of, uh, of Egypt all the way up through to Samaria and modern day, up to modern day Syria. But look how vast, all right, the Seleucid Empire was, man. That's why he was able to take Ptolemy down. He, they were just bigger. Okay, now it says he gathered his entire realm to come down and fight us, man. All right? This little small region, I can't have, I don't have a pointer here, but on the tablet, but uh, that, that, that just to put that in context here, man. All right? Y'all know how much land this is, man? All right? This is modern day Syria, where it says the word Seleucid. All right? And you can see the Tigris and the Euphrates. And it goes all the way across through modern day uh, Saudi Arabia, Iraq, going to the right. From left to right, you got Syria, you got Iraq, all right? And then you have uh, uh, Iran, all right? And down where it says Gura, down there by the, uh, in, that, in that sea, that's Iran on the east side of that. And then you over to the right, he was all the way in Afghanistan, man. To the right, if that is Afghanistan, going into uh, uh, basically Pakistan almost, man. Okay? That's how big the, the Seleucid Empire was. So you got you to gotta remember that when, 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 when it says, I'll read it again. All right? Verse 27, now when the king Antiochus heard these things, he was full of indignation. Wherefore, he sent and gathered together all the forces of his realm, even a very strong army. That's to put that in, in context of what was going down, man. Call hello, Yahweh, Bashi, Yahweh, Shai, man. All right? This is why there's a high holy day after it, man. It's why we celebrated this week. All right? And it says, let me see. It says, verse 29, Nevertheless, when they saw that the money of his treasures failed, that the tributes in the country were small, because of the because uh, of the dissension and plague, when he had brought up on the land in taking away the laws which had been of old time, he feared that they should not be able to bear the charges any longer, nor have nor to have such gifts to give so liberally as he did before, for he had abounded above the kings that were before him. All right. In other words, Seleucids and Antiochus, they were winning over the other generals that Alexander had, had parted his land with, man. Why? Because he was spoiling us. We were the most fruitful tributes, <laughs> all right? That's why he gathered the whole realm and he, he, he didn't let it go, man. He, need, he needed that money, man, all right? Because this devil Antiochus, he really wanted to reign uh, over the entirety of the Greek empire, okay? But that, that wasn't... Uh, written to be the case because the Most High was raising up a guy you may have heard of him a guy by the name of Julius Caesar over there in Rome <laughs> all right so so this was the time this was basically the end of the third beast all right going into the fourth beast which is the first uh, uh, Roman Empire all right anyway there was another point on here Says, then Lysias chose Ptolemy, the son of Dormenes, Nicanor, and Georges, mighty men of the king's friends. And with them he sent forth 40,000 footmen and 7,000 horsemen to go into the land of Judah and to destroy it as the king commanded. 40,000, that's a huge army, man. All right? I believe Alexander's army, when he took over all of that land, he only had 30,000 men. All right? Let me see, skipping on. Skipping on, bear with me. Go over to, I think there's something in verse four as well. As I was reading this, man. Yep, yeah, verse, Mac, first Maccabees four and one, then Georges took 5,000 men and a thousand of his best horsemen and removed out of the camp by night to the end he might rush in upon the camp of the Jews and smite them suddenly. So you see, they're the ones doing guerrilla tactics. You see? This guy's projecting. 
He didn't want to fight us straight up. But what happened when, when, when we found out they were coming up again? We Judas gathered the men, a small company of men, and said, let's go meet them, man. All right? You see how Esau tries to flip everything? All right? And it says, uh, and the men of the fortress were his guides. And now when Judas heard, therefore, he himself removed and the valiant men with him that he might smite the king's army, which was at Emmaus, uh, Emmaus, Salakia, that's how you pronounce that. While as yet the forces were dispersed of, uh, from the camp in the mean season, George came by night into the camp of Judas. And when he found no man there, he sought them in the mountains. All right. For he said, these fellows flee from us. But as soon as it was day, Judas showed himself in the plain. What is that? He showed up at daytime, not at night in a plain. Plain is an open field. All right. Not a valley or a duck off. All right. With 3,000 men who nevertheless had neither armor nor swords to their mind. So they, we didn't even need swords, man. The spirit was on us, man. All right. And it says, and they saw the camp of the heathen that it was strong and well harnessed and compassed round about with horsemen. And these were expert of war. All right. So that's how that's how raw we were back in the day, man. <laughs> you didn't even have swords, man. And we was charging in in an open field, man. <laughs> All right. Now, if you know anything about an open field, that leaves you very vulnerable to archers and getting flanked and all kind of things, man. But it says, remember. Verse eight, then said Judas to the men that were with him, fear ye not their multitude, neither be ye afraid of their assault. Remember how our fathers were delivered in the Red Sea when Pharaoh pursued them with an army. Now, therefore, let us cry unto heaven. If peradventure the Lord Yahweh will have mercy upon us and remember the covenant of our fathers and destroy this host before our face this day. That's how we got the glory, through prayer, man. Not being carnal and making up our own uh, 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 bullshit, man. Not being pull-up boys and doing things of our own belly. All right? And it says, So all the heathen may know that there is one who delivereth and saved Israel. All right? Then the strangers lifted up their eyes and saw them coming over against them, wherefore they went out of the camp to battle, but they that were with Judas sounded their trumpets. All right, so they joined the battle, and the heathen, being discomfited, fled into the plain. All right, so everybody knew about this man. All right, they, they, when, the, when the Romans took over, they had a great respect for us, man. All right, and they know what what Alexander had had respect for us too, man. It, but what, when when so when Antiochus Got a, got that demon on him. All right. Well, that, that's why it says a wicked root of <laughs> Antiochus. Let me go to that, man. Because this guy, he didn't want to rule his own kingdom. He wanted to take over Ptolemy's kingdom and he wanted to put hell on us when, when Alexander left us alone. Okay. First Maccabees 1 and 10, it says, and there came out of them a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes. All right. So we know the Greeks are the wicked. But it even it even calls him out as the wicked because he's he's on the next level, even for an Edomite man. <laughs> All right, son of Antiochus the king, who had been a hostage at Rome, and he reigned in the hundred and thirty and seventh year uh, of the kingdom of the Greeks. Okay, so so the Rome Rome was getting the better of the rest of the of the Greek Empire. When you look at Rome on a map, it's it's to the west. All right. And they were crossing over the Italian peninsula over to the Greek peninsula, man, you know, which I believe that's the uh, the Adriatic Sea. OK. And once they took over uh, Macedonia, that was pretty much the end of the uh, the Greek Empire. OK. And it says. Let me see. That might be it on this, man. But you can read the first five chapters are really good to give you some good context on how this whole thing went down. All right. Showing you that this guy will try to flip the flip the facts on its head and 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 and, and minimize and downplay things. You know? They they try to make it seem like we were just some 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 ho ass niggas. All right. And you did have a lot of ho ass niggas that, that were willing to, to, to bow the knee and join with the heathen. But ultimately, the Lord always had a remnant, 
that was always about it, man. And when I say about it, I don't mean carnal. I mean, they, 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 they were about the will of Yahweh Bashim and Yahweh Shai, man. And through that, we are, we are able to take over armies physically. All right? You see? Real quick, I'm going to get this and I'll end it. Get that Psalm 144. All right. Psalms 144. Uh, chapter, uh, verse 1. It says, Blessed be the Lord Jehovah, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. All right. So that's, that's the glory, man. All right. If you don't have... Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai on your side and you're trying to engage in carnal fights and, 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 and warfare, you're gonna you're gonna get put down, man. All right. All you carnal niggas that got sticks, chill the fuck out. All right. It says verse two, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower, and my deliverer, my shield, and, and he and he in whom I trust, who subdueth my people under me, man. So it's the Lord that puts the heathen down. All right. It always has been that way and it always will be that way. All right. Anyway, I'll end it there, man. Lord willing, this was edifying. Call Halal Yahweh Bashimi Hawashai, Bahashim Rakhakadash, and Shalom.